In today's session, we're going to look at the breath and how we can strengthen our lungs, breathe more deeply. We're going to work on loosening up some of the muscles around the rib cage, but also thinking about how we breathe. Now, anyone who wishes to, you can sit on the floor, but if you're sitting down or a chair, if you're sitting down, please be aware of your posture, that you're sitting as upright as possible and keeping as much mobility in this waist and lung area, okay? Now let's just start breathing in through the nose, right through the mouth. Just concentrate on your normal breath. It's not Pilates breathing here. You're going to find you're probably breathing across the chest area shallowly. This is our normal everyday breath. Trying to avoid the shoulders lifting. And now I'm going to take it on to Pilates breathing, what we tend to think of as Pilates breathing. Here, we tend to breathe in through the nose because that creates some filtering through the, the nose hairs rather than through the mouth. Obviously, if you're bunged up, you're going to breathe in through your mouth. Just remember, in yoga, we breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. So, again, if you're used to doing yoga, don't worry too much. It's more important to keep breathing throughout the exercise. When you hold your breath, you're more likely to cause problems, okay? Um, if you hold your breath and you fold in half, you can fart. Um, but also, anybody who has blood pressure issues, it can actually build up tension. So really need to concentrate on what we're doing. We often move with the breath in Pilates. Okay, so making sure you're in a comfortable position, seated or standing. And I'm gonna ask you now to take your hands onto your ribcage, or if that's uncomfortable, use your forearms. I want you to be able to feel your ribs expand as you breathe in. Um, what I'm going to ask is that you imagine that you're taking your breath here to the back of your ribs. So as you breathe in, expand as you breathe out through the mouth. Breathing in. It might make you feel a little lightheaded. If it does, then stop for a moment, catch your breath again. I'm going to ask you to do an even deeper breath. We're only going to do one at a time to so allow your breath to come back to normal in case you get that lightheaded feeling. It can feel quite heady, it can feel quite nice for those that like it, but just be aware that it could make you feel a little dizzy. And I'm going to ask you to breathe all the way down into your belly, belly breathing. But when you breathe, try and think about starting the breath from the bottom, not from the top. So you're going to try and draw the breath into the bottom of the lungs, down into the belly area. So really think of any of your belly this time. Breathing in, filling up the ribs, and back out. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you now to do, we're going to do a little exercise, three, two, one. Three normal shallow breaths, two Pilates breathing, or thoracic ribcage breathing, and then one in the abdominal. And we're going to repeat that two or three times. To start off with three shallow breaths in your own time, as long and as strong as you can make them. down into the ribcage area for two and now right down feeling from the bottom up rest for a moment. Now while we're having that rest, what I want you to do is have a quick look at how you're standing. So if your feet have turned out, bring them back in. If your legs have gone a little bit wide, try and bring them back so that you've got the centre of the hips, centre of the knees, centre of the ankles. Also thinking about your posture. So I know some people tend to stand forward on their hips. I'm exaggerating here. 
not a natural position for me. Well, some of you have my preference where we tend to stick our bum out and stand a little bit like this. For those who do that, tuck in. So if you're standing forward, tighten up on the knees. If you're sticking your bum out, tuck that pelvis under. And try and do the next breath round with yourself in a better posture. So relax the arms down, three shallow normal breaths. Two deep breaths in your own time. Deeper breath, all the way down, going up from the bottom. Come back to some normal breaths for, for a moment. Try and forget your breathing again. And just be now aware of how your body's feeling. Are you feeling any tension anywhere? Is your weight evenly between both feet? Could you maybe shift your weight you now are you standing on one leg try and bring it back evenly spread your toes if you need to relax those shoulders back and down okay and we're going to go again so really just concentrate it's the same breath as you've been doing while i've been talking but i want you to just concentrate on that for three breaths Try and make it deeper for two breaths into the thoracic or the ribcage area. Our Pilates breathing. And then one deep, strong breath coming from the bottom. And again, release. And just allow your breath to come back to normal. Next thing I'd like you to do is think about moving with the breath. Now, I do this quite often in class, but what I'd like you to do today <coughs> is really think about those breaths. And whether you're doing a shallow breath or whether you're doing the Pilates breathing, be aware of that. We're not going to do the deep breath again. If you want to do that as breath practice on its own, you can do that three, two, one breathing um, to help strengthen and get that breath going and you can think about what's going on with your body there and how that feels in your lungs but today I want you to think about what we do in class generally so you're going to breathe in and as you breathe out float one arm up we're just isolating that arm breathing out as we lift in as we come back down so although I'd like your posture to be good here I'm wanting you to concentrate here for the moment on your breath. It's a nice, easy movement with the arm to allow you to concentrate on the breath. Breathing out. So you're not moving with me, you're moving with your own breath. You should get to the top as your breath finishes. Breathing in to bring it back down. Okay. As you finish your next left arm float. We're going to continue with the same, but I want you to then bring your focus back to your posture. So have you engaged your core? Have you pulled your belly button back towards the spine? Feel as if you've tightened up the muscles across the abdominal. Have you allowed your hips to drop forward or your pelvis to tilt back? depending on your own posture type. Okay. Now, 
a slightly different exercise than I've done previously. I'm going to do some work to stretch through the side of the body. So we're going to take your right arm out and up. Now, I want you to try and take the arm by the ear. So I'll put it here. If it isn't full, it's here. And I'm going to reach up. I'm going to keep that arm as straight as possible. And I'm going to stretch over. So it isn't really about the arm. It's more about what's going on here. I want you to feel this stretch in that area. Remember I said to breathe towards the back here? Well, that's the area we're trying to stretch now. So we're taking the arm up. You're going to reach up and over. And take it back down. This is getting some mobility in the shoulder. It's going to help with opening up the shoulder girdle as well. So you're going to open up across here by taking the arm back as far as is comfortable. And again, don't worry, if the arm is in front, that's not such an issue as long as you're feeling it where our focus is today. You'll often find with the exercises I teach in my classes that I might teach it totally different. It's because I have a different focus. And today I'm focusing on opening up the lungs, loosening up the upper body. I'm going to change it this time. I'm going to bring one arm up, bring the other arm up to join it. And you can use this hand you've brought up to grab the wrist. And this time you're going to reach up and over. Which is going to stretch into the upper body. I'm going to let go. Keep your hand there. You're going to feel that a bit more here. Now if you're in front, you're still going to get that. But try and pull that arm back so that it's in alignment here rather than forward. Now I'm not too worried with this one, whether you keep your hips in alignment or whether you push them out to the side. Listen to your body, do what feels good for you. So one arm up, bring the other up and grab the wrist and reach over. So you've got that position there. Or if you push the hip out, it's going to extend the stretch. So you do what feels best for you. Longer term, you might want to switch to pushing the hip out. And bring the arms down, changing side. Right arm up, bring the hand to grab, reach and stretch. So again, think of being between two panes of glass. You're not allowing your body to lean forward and you're going to think about your posture throughout. So breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. We're going to do one more each side. Breathing in. Breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, last one, left side, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. Little fingers forward, thumbs back. Now, we're trying to open up across the chest here. What I often find I tend to do is I lift my chest when I do this. So really be aware of that when you're doing this work, that you keep from doing that. So it's keeping that posture back, stretch across the chest. We're trying to open up upper chest, across the shoulders. This is also going to help your posture because you're opening up through the shoulders. But if you keep that chest down, you are going to open up through the chest. Now, let's change the position and take it down and hold. Coming forward and up and taking it down and open out. Coming back and circle the shoulders. Well done. A little bit of rotation side to side. Again, whether you're seated or standing, you can get some rotation. So having let the hips go if you're standing, I'm going to now ask you to do that again. We're going to bend the knees slightly. So I've just uh, bend my knees slightly so that I can get my pelvis tucked under. And I'm 
I'm going to twist from the waist. So I'm keeping those hips, and I've got the knees bent to keep those hips forward. I'm twisting from the waist. In fact, let's take our hands one on top of the other and twist from the waist. It's not about moving the elbows round, so try and avoid pulling the elbows. You're taking the head and the whole of the upper body, twisting from the waist. I've got fairly good mobility here. You might find you're nowhere near as mobile. You might find you're only moving a small amount to each side. That's fine. Opening up through. So those of you that are standing, we're going to roll down to the floor now for the next workout. So chin to chest, one vertebrae at a time. Rolling down as you breathe out. Rolling in as you return back up. Again, be aware of your posture. Think of where your feet are when you do this. Try and avoid sticking your bottom out. Roll down. as low as is comfortable. And we're going to do that about four times. And after four, come down to sitting. So we're going to come to a comfortable seated position. Now for most of you, you are going to want to be sitting on a block, particularly if you've got tight hamstrings. Those of you that stand forward on your hips are going to find that your back is going to be arching away in this position. So I want you to be sitting comfortably. I'm going to sit cross-legged, but you need to do what's comfortable for you. And we're going to just go through that breathing, that 3-2-1 breathing that we did at the beginning of the workout. Um, but I want you to hear concentrate on your posture and just be aware of how it feels in the seated position compared with standing or sitting in a chair. So, breathing in through the nose and through the mouth, but keep it that fairly natural chest level breath. You can close your eyes if you want so you can concentrate. And then we're going to take it to the thoracic breath for two. And then your deep belly breathing all the way down. Start from the bottom of your belly. And just relax your breathing back to normal. So be aware there, the difference. You might find that you felt very restricted in that seated position. It depends how you were seated. Okay. Next exercise we're going to do, legs both out wide. Anyone with osteoporosis here, please keep it small and keep it slow. The rest of us can do this movement a little bit faster, but we're going to start with slow version. I'm going to exaggerate my movements. And remember, I'm very flexible. You might find you're nowhere near as far when you come to reach. This is an exercise where you want to be sitting on a block, probably. You want to keep your back in position. So really think of your posture here. You're sitting tall. Your back isn't dropping away. Your shoulders are back. You're sitting tall to get the best breath you can. Be aware of any areas of tension. If it really is too tight, it doesn't matter if you bend your knees up a little bit. Sit on your block if you need to. I know I keep repeating it, but a lot of people I see doing this exercise are arching their back back. Now, throughout this exercise, I want you to think about keeping the spine upright and the head above the neck, chin retracted. I don't care how far forward you come. I just want you to get that rotation of the spine and that forward fold. We're folding from the waist it's not a bend of the spine, it's from the waist only. Arms come wide. 
taking the left arm to the right knee. And some of you, that's going to be as far as you go. Watch that you're not lifting this hip. And just slide down as far as you can comfortably go. This hip stays. Coming back. You don't have to lift the arms this high. I'm doing this again so that you can see I'm resetting in the middle. I'll come to the other side and slide as far as is comfortable, keeping this hip on the floor. Coming back up. Breathing in. Try not to lift the chest, just open through, fold from the waist as far as you comfortably can. Breathing in. It's with your own breath. Out through the mouth. Breathing in through the nose. Out through the mouth. So we're trying to do the thoracic breathing, the ribcage breathing if you can. And moving with the breath. In your time, not mine. So you're doing it with your own breath, trying to lengthen and strengthen the breath. And, uh, there's always a little bit of a shake out if you need to. So for the next exercise, anyone who's got problems with their knees or their hips hurting, you can do this exercise with the legs back in this sort of position. Again, they can be slightly bent as well. Those of you that are perfectly mobile, you're going to keep your right leg straight. You're going to bring your left foot in. So we're going to be able, we're going to want to potentially put our weight onto that knee in, the, in this, this workout. So, hands in line with your bottom. So my bottom's in line with the back of my mat, so I'm taking my fingers out to the side. I'm going to breathe in. Side of the bent leg, so this is our left side. You're going to take the arm up by the ear, reach up first, stretch over and feel that stretch through the side of the body. I'm leaning down into the other arm, keeping that arm straight. It's more about reaching up. I'm reaching up to sort of the area where the ceiling and the corner of the wall in this room meet, trying to keep the arm back in line with the ear and release coming down. So this time you have a choice. You can take the arm up and over and just bend the knee. Bend the elbow even. Those that want to can extend this by coming up onto the heel and reaching over. But again, think of reaching. And that's really going to extend the stretch through that rib area. This is optional. You can keep the hip down if you prefer and release. Okay, let's change sides. Obviously, those of you with the legs wide, you're just going to stretch one side and then the other. So again, taking the hands back, shoulders back and relaxed, taking the arm up by the ear, reaching up, bending the opposite arm and just stretching across, feeling the rib cages, rib cages, your ribs or your rib cage opening up. Beautiful. And release. Coming back, taking the other arm up. So if your legs are out straight, again, you're just going to reach up and over. So you're going to get exactly the same from both sides. But for those of you that are able to or want to, take the weight into that hand, come up and stretch. And again, it's stretching up. Really extending the stretch. Beautiful. And come back down. Open out. As you can see, I've turned my mat around slightly. This is just so that I've got enough room to move. I need a little bit of room behind the mat so that I can open my arms for the arm openings exercise. We're going to be lying down, but I just want to go through with you briefly. When we're lying down, the fingertips are going to be touching, shoulders are going to be stacked, and we're going to be opening out to the side. So one arm's going to be coming around, opening out. It isn't about twisting the arms, it's not about touching the floor. Let's come down to the floor. I've got a block with a towel on top. A cushion will do fine. Anything to support the head. Your head's going to be on the front of the block. Bring your knees forward as if you were sitting in a chair. So ankles, knees, hips stacked. 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Taking those arms out in front, touching the fingertips. And I'm going to suggest that you breathe in as you open up. We're opening up, we're creating space. Taking the arm back as far as you can, letting the head go with it. 
breathing out as you return. So we're compressing the body, compressing the lungs as we come back. So let's breathe out then. Breathing in as you open up, expanding the ribs. Now anyone with osteoporosis might wish to allow their knees to move. For the rest of you, I want to try and keep that top hip lined up so that you get the maximum rotation in the spine to increase flexibility of your spine and open up the gaps between the ribs as best you can to give you optimal breathing. and stop any restriction caused by tenseness in the ribs. So you're moving with your own breath, breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. In as you open up and expand, out as you come back and contract. Fingertips touching at the front. Okay, from there, I'm going to get you to come onto your back. And keep the arms out wide to the side. It can be comfortable. If it's more comfortable lower down, that's fine. And if you feel more comfortable without the block, then for your posture, it's actually better to have a very small block or nothing under your head. Feet and knees together. Now, again, anyone with osteoporosis can keep both feet on the floor. What we're going to do is take the knees down to the right, lifting the left foot off the ground, breathing out as you go down, in as you come back. Pause at the middle. Breathing out. And in. Out through the mouth, in through the nose. Just give a little pause at the top. Lifting the top foot off. And again, it, as, as well as those with osteoporosis, anyone who's struggling with this, finding it's a little bit too much, you can re reduce this movement by allowing both feet to stay on the ground and here we're just re getting some mobility in the lower spine and opening up through the lower ribs from there we're going to go on to the other side so you have a choice you can either turn away from me or my preferred version is that you change your head to the other side of the mat so that you can see what is happening. Again, your block needs to be towards the back of your mat. Your knees are coming forward as if you're sitting in the chair. Fingertips touching. Your head's on the front of the block. Fingertips touching. Knees stacked, hips stacked. And you're going to open up. Again, trying to keep the knees together. Think about opening up through the chest. Now I'm having to adapt here slightly because on this side I'm actually touching the wall, which is why I asked you to move away. If I did that, you wouldn't see me at all. Fingertips touching as you come back. Breathing in as you open up. Breathing out as you come back. Letting that head go with you. Trying to keep the knees together and just getting the amount of rotation that you can through the spine and opening up the rib cage. Coming back, touching the fingers together. From here, I'm going to ask you to come onto the front. Now I'm going to ask you to come up to sitting and watch this one or look sideways but try and avoid looking up directly at me. Taking your forehead onto the mat, onto the block or onto the floor. Elbows in by the side of the body and we're going to come up into a baby cobra. Try and relax the feet. Just lifting up through the chest. 
try and relax your bottom and just hold that stretch and then release back down breathing out as you lift and you return your head towards me turn it back centre and release back down try and keep the feet and the bottom relaxed lifting up again turn your head to the side Lifting up, turning to one side, and down. And once more to the other side, looking away. And release. Bring the hands under the shoulder. Let's push up onto our force and stretch back. Now I'm going to get you to come onto all fours and we're just going to do cat and cow. So I'm arching the back up. Really feel that stretch through the upper back and release. Lifting the chest to the sky. Try and keep your neck relaxed for this. If it is too much on your wrists, then by all means come onto your fists or you can use a block to put underneath your hands so that the angle is slightly less. Coming back to neutral, I'm going to ask you to turn around and sit and watch me for a moment. So again, with these exercises, I'm trying to avoid you putting any strain on your neck. So I'd like you to watch me first. I'll take you through both, both exercises we're going to do. This now is no longer for breathing. This is more about stability. We're going to have hands, arms underneath. Breathing out. Breathing in. I'm doing this a little bit fast. You're going to do it slower than this. We're going to do a few of those, so arm floats. Then I'm going to take you to leg slides. It is slide. The foot stays on the mat. You bring it back. Try to keep the pelvis still, breathing out, breathing in. So we're going to do some individually, and then we're going to do a hold. So when I say, you'll then come into an opposite arm and leg and hold, trying to keep the weight even as you can. When you've had enough, you'll bring it back. You can stretch back if you need to, and then we'll take the other one and hold. In alignment if you can, coming back and stretch. And again, do what you need with your wrist. Just a quick one there for those that have a problem with your wrist. If you use block, you can take that pressure off a little bit there if it helps, or turn the hands sideways. The position of the hands in this one doesn't matter too much as long as we're doing the floats, off you go. I'm going to join you. So starting with arm floats. Weights evenly between the hands and the knees. Try and watch that you're not dipped back. And we're going to take an arm float. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Through the nose. Don't forget to engage your core. Bring your belly button back against your spine. Once more each side and then we'll change to legs only. If you need to sit up briefly, give your shoulder, your elbows and wrists a bit of a wiggle, then please do when you're ready. Join back in. And again, with this one, do as many as you're comfortable. If you need to stop and rest, please do. Slightly not put a whale on the floor. And bring it back in. 
slow and controlled, trying to keep the pelvis as still as possible, trying to move with your breathing. So as you breathe out, you're going to slide that leg away, engage the core, and hold and control. If it stays on the floor, breathing out, in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, and again, it's in your own time. If your arms start to hurt and you need a rest, please come back, stretch through, roll the wrists, you know your body, listen to it and see what it wants to give you a rest. Now we're going to come back onto that all fours position and you're going to take opposite arm and leg away and hold. Try and be aware of what's happening with your middle body, so try not to arch your back. We're looking for a straight line if you can, doesn't matter if your arm and leg are lower. When you start to wobble, bring it back in, rest back if you need to, and change the to hold. I'm going to get you to do two each side. If that's too much, then stop after one. Just stretch back into child's pose. Just get a stretch through the lower back, through the rib cage. Now, no posture type exercise class is going to be right without work on our hamstrings. That's all. If you've got really flexible hamstrings, then this is less important for you, but those of you that have tight hamstrings, you're going to be better, be better off with your strap, dressing gown band, belt, towel, whatever else you can adapt to support your foot. I want you to take that block away now. If you're going to use a block, optimum is about that thickness, that's about an inch, maybe slightly less than an inch, no or no block at all, which is going to help keep your head in its neutral position. Lying back down on your mat. Really open up through the shoulder blades. And start by taking the feet hip width apart and become aware of your pelvis. So you're going to tilt your pelvis. We're not lifting the bottom. We're just doing a little north-south rock, pushing the small of the back into the mat, a little bit of an arch away, until you come back to neutral where the pelvis is flat. So if you put your heels of your hand on these two bony protrusions on the top of your hips and do a triangle and have a quick peep. If your fingers are tipped up, you're too far one way. If they're tipped the other way, they're too far the other. So it should be fairly flat. A little bit of gap under the lower back. And we're going to stretch our hamstrings. So some people won't need the strap, but I'm going to get you to take your right leg in the air. Use the strap. And I want the leg to be straight, so I don't mind where the leg is, but I want you to feel that stretch in the back of the knee. Now, for me, this is comfortable. For me, I can hold it, but some of you won't be able to, so you're going to use something to hang on to. Try and relax the arms and just hold that stretch. We're going to hold this for a little while to try and develop the stretch to make you more flexible in the long term. Okay, and release, and take it back up, so you can come a little bit closer. But again, ideally, the weight of the leg is either going to be directly above your body, if you're flexible enough, or you're going to be holding it in the strap. And you're going to feel that in the back of the knee, and down the back of the, back of the thigh. Okay, let's change legs, so switch round. If you're using the strap, bring your feet back to hip width apart, be aware of what's going on with your pelvis and take that leg up. 
So again, if you're there, that's fine too. Try and relax the upper body. Keep the shoulder blades nice and wide. And just keep the leg straight and bring it as close as is comfortable for you. So again, if it's there, that's fine. If it's there, that's fine. You've got the support of something to hold it. Okay, and release. We're going to get rid of the strap now. We'll go back to the first leg. And I can ask you to bring the knee in as close to the chest as you comfortably can get it and hold the leg. And then push the heel up towards the ceiling. Flexing the foot and stretching up. And release, taking it down. Come back to the other side, bring the knee into the chest, take the hands underneath, flex the foot and push that foot and going up and that way. So I'm keeping the knee in as close to my body as I can get it. And release. Okay. Next exercise, anyone who's got problems with their hips are probably going to need to leave this one out. I ask you to put the soles of your feet together and let the knees drop out to the side. Now, I know a couple of people in the class are really going to struggle with this. You can hold underneath here to give it a little bit of support. If that really is uncomfortable, leave this one out. We're not going to hold it for very long, but just to get a little bit of a stretch through the inner thigh. Bring those legs back in. Bringing both knees into the chest now. Those of you that can, I'm going to ask you to lift your shoulders and head off the ground. You don't have to. Any time you need to, put your head down. And we're going to do single leg stretch, hugging one leg in. Other hand comes across. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in. So I'm hugging one knee. The other leg's about 45 degrees. Shh. In, in. So this one's a little bit faster. Doesn't have to be very low. You should be feeling in your tummy. If it starts to hurt in your neck, by all means, put your head down. If you can, then relift it. Then great. When you've had enough, hug your knees into the chest. It's a little faster than we normally do that exercise. Give you a little, yourself a little bit of a rock. Hook your knees into your chest. Circle the legs just to release everything through. Okay. We're going to do some of our usual stretches. So let's start sitting with the legs out straight in front. Those of you that need to sit on your thin block, you can now, or even a thicker block. Think about your posture sitting upright. Legs out straight in front, hip width apart. Sitting tall, shoulders relaxed down. And just think about your breathing for a few moments. Do that thoracic breathing and just feel that ribcage breathing, just to feel whether or not you're restricting your breathing by your seated position. If you are, please adjust. Now, bring the right knee in and take that foot over. Left hand comes and holds, hugs. This arm comes behind, close behind your body, and you're going to gently look over your shoulder. Coming back the other way, bringing the elbow on the inside. And either drop your hand down or you can keep it up. And look over the other shoulder. And release. 
taking that leg in front. So the leg that you had on the top is going to go in front, crossing the ankles over, sit tall, wriggling forward. Obviously, again, if you've got problems with your knees or hips here, then you can leave this one out. Just sit comfortably and concentrate on your breathing. Well, I'm feeling that stretch in this. This will be your left hip. Easing forward. Ease back. Okay, let's change legs. Opposite leg comes over. Hugging with this arm. This arm comes close to your heart. And you're looking over your left shoulder this time. Foot stays flat on the floor. You're hugging that knee in to stretch through the hip. And then come back the other way. Either the hand comes up or down to the floor. And again, watch you're not pushing that leg away. Keep that foot there. Use that for a little rotation. But just accordingly, if you know that you've got osteoporosis, you might not want to make that too strong a push, but you do need to get some rotation. Open up. Okay, that leg comes in front. And once again, if this is not good for your hips, then by all means, leave this one out. Sit comfortably and concentrate on your breathing again. So this is going to stretch the opposite hip. Easing forward. Okay, from there, we're going to come up to standing. So I'm going to ask you to stand with your feet together this time. And be aware of how the weight is between both feet. Spread your toes slightly. Now, what I hope you're going to notice is that compared with standing with the feet hip width apart, that you actually feel a little less stable you're going to wobble a little bit from side to side and we're going to do a few movements with our feet in this position bringing the hands up palms to the ceiling elbows in tight to the body and we're going to do dumb waiter just opening out and this movement comes from the shoulder not from the elbow And I want you to try and keep those hands either pointing straight forward or out to the side. So try and avoid crossing the body with the hands. We're trying to open up the shoulders, which is going to improve your posture, but also open up the upper chest area. And let's change that now to Cleopatra. So this is a gentle balance exercise as well as our arm movement. Okay, from there I'm now going to ask you to take your feet out to hip width. Check if you need to. Watch that your feet are pointing forward. Think about your posture again. And we're going to do exactly that same movement again. So bringing the elbows in, take them back, opening out, coming back in. Think about engaging your core. And does your balance feel better in that position? It should do. I did that for two reasons. One was to make you aware of how much more balanced you feel in this position with your feet together, but also because you'll be slightly out of balance. And release. Let's flip the hands the other way. Palms down. Take them out. Reach as far as it's comfortable. Bring it back in, elbows in tight, relax and push down. What I'm going to do today, I'm aware that at least one person is having problems with hips and feet at the moment. So if you can't do this one, then obviously you're going to leave it out. But I ask you to do a tightrope walk. So think of the tandem stand. We're trying to take one foot in front of the other. 
walking forward, keeping the head up. And going backwards. Now as you're doing this, we're trying to keep the feet pointing forwards. And you might, like me, going backwards, find it a little bit harder. If you can get that toe touching the heel, even better. Put the hands where you need to for balance. Keep that head up though. Now if you start to walk like a penguin, tucking your toes out, then one, you're not using these muscles, the glute medius muscles in the side of the buttocks, sort of back of the thighs area. They're getting weaker, which is going to make your balance worse. So just be aware of that. If you know you turn your feet out, watch you bring those toes in. So try again. If you're finding this is too much, do take your feet a little bit wider. Do make the steps a little bit bigger. Or you can cheat like I've been doing slightly by using the wall. So once more. You are going to wobble a bit on this, but remember, engage your core. Keep your posture best you can. Last time back. Well done. I thought I'd throw something a little different. I know you're all capable of doing it, very similar to some of the previous exercises we've done, but just a little bit different for today. Let's now think about the pelvic stability. You need to come up on your toes and alternate. Try and keep the pelvis as still as possible. If you put your hands on your hips or your waist, but hips is probably best because you will feel what's going on. You and I will be able to tell whether or not you're wiggling your hips from side to side. Try to move up and down. And release. Come up and balance on your toes. Doesn't have to be very high. I've come up quite high here. But if you can only manage half an inch or so off the floor, that is fine. We've had enough. Relax, give them a bit of a shake out. Beautiful. I'm going to come back to the breathing we did earlier. If you want to sit down, by all means sit down for this one. But again, be aware of what's going on. We're going to do that three, two, one breathing. Three natural shallow breaths through the chest. Two in the ribcage. One filling up from the tummy upwards. So in your own time, three shallow breaths. Two Pilates or thoracic breathing breaths. Feel those rib cage, those ribs expanding into your hands. And try to fill up and come right down from the bottom of your lungs, from the bottom upwards. And again, three small. Time when you're ready, move on for two.
Well done. That's all for this week. See you again next time.